All right, this next one is a super cool one. Uh, there's going to be two components to this. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this arrows over here so I can have the little docking station. And I'm going to get rid of the brush by just clicking the white icon, go in here to alpha and drag alpha over here. And in alpha, you're going to see there's a new ball relief. And then if we go in here to sub tool, you're going to see underneath here is also a project ball relief. Uh, similar but different. We're going to go ahead and start with the alpha side and then we'll talk about uh, the sub tool side. So with the alpha side, what this is basically going to do is uh, capture whatever your whatever's on your document essentially any models or sub tools you have and then you can see here we have multiple sub tools uh, available here and it's gonna uh, capture that now in order to capture it or at least know where our bounds are it might be useful to go in here to document and then click the zoom and then zoom your document out a little bit mine's hard to see because it's the exact same color gray so I'm gonna say document uh, click back and then drag off I'm gonna choose a slightly lighter gray so we can see when I zoom in and out that's where my document is. So this is how big my document is and this is how big my model is in my document. So another thing you can do is if you want to keep snapping back uh, to the original position, uh, we can just quickly go in here to document, zap link properties. I'm going to save this as front. So we can just go ahead and click that. And in fact, you know what? I'll just go ahead and pull this menu down here. So we have our model on our document. We have alpha menu open and underneath ball relief, we have a bunch of options in here. So the very first one I'm gonna talk about is this make ball relief. So if I click this one, it's gonna take a second and then it's going to capture this model information as an alpha. And you're gonna see it's gonna be uh, alpha um, ball relief 01. So what I can do with this now is uh, we'll go ahead and take our standard brush and we'll clone it off. We'll set this to drag rect and we have this alpha selected. I'm gonna to go to a coin here. I'm gonna go into solo mode. You can see it's basically just a coin that has uh, one side unmasked. So I can go through here with this one and I can click and drag. And we'll go ahead and switch our material back to our gray. And then if I click and drag here, it's gonna drag what it captured onto our object. And of course, just like anything else, we can go through here and we can adjust last if we wanna pop this out more or punch it in uh, to do a negative. So if you wanna adjust that, you absolutely can. And usually when I'm dragging out an alpha, I like to do a focal shift of negative 100. So I just get that alpha, no, no blur around there. So this is going to be our brush for dragging out an alpha. So let's talk about some of these settings. Oh, I should also mention the Z intensity also, obviously, you know, there's the intensity of 25, Z intensity of six, Z intensity of 60. So we'll go ahead and leave it at the default 25. So you can use it just last, but of course the intensity or Z sub, you can turn it to Z sub if you want it to go inwards. But uh, the relief repeat count is essentially how many times it's going to run this ball relief algorithm. The higher the number, it might punch a little more detail into your alpha. I've tried low and I've tried high. I haven't seen a tremendous amount of difference, but depending on your model, you may need to play with this. Now, as we go through some of these options, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of do a quick test because so we can kind of see the differences here. Uh, for example, relief contrast. So right now it's at zero. So I think these are just the defaults that I had dialed in. Uh, so that's going to be our ball relief 01. So if I take this uh, relief contrast and I pump it up to one and then say make ball relief, I'm going to have, oops, I have to <laughs> turn off my coin and then go out of solo mode here. And again, if I move my object here, I'm just trying to be consistent for you. So I'm going to hit front so it snaps back and then we can say, okay, make ball relief with the relief contrast set to one. And then now if we want to do our test here, all we got to do is go back to one. And this is with the relief contrast at zero. I'm going to do shift S to capture that to my canvas. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that last stroke. And then I'm going to swap this alpha out with relief 03. And now you're going to see basically what it does is it increases the contrast of your alpha. In fact, you can even just hover over the alpha. So here's a very contrasty alpha. Here's your lower contrast alpha. So on hard surface models, which we'll get to in a bit, it might capture uh, those hard edges a little bit better and give you a little bit more contrast. In the with the results on an organic model, eh, not really something I'm looking like. But that doesn't mean don't use it, just dial in that number. So maybe if we try point two, control and declare a canvas, we'll go back to our model here, go out of solo mode. And again, we'll just drop back down here say make ball relief. So here's a, here's here's it is with a little bit of contrast. So if we go back to our coin here and we drag this out, you know, maybe if you want to tighten up a little bit of those edges, uh, it's not a bad thing. So I'll let you dial that in depending on the type of object you have. 
Relief step tolerance is another, uh, it's kind of an interesting one. So at point two, that means that when it's going through evaluating your mesh and it's and it sees a value where the difference between two pixels right next to each other are greater than 20%, which is what that point two signifies. Uh, if it's greater than a 20% difference, it's going to generate uh, an in-between to kind of smooth those transitional gradients out. Of course, it's kind of hard to explain and then visualize what that means. So of course, if you want to run a test, the default is set at point two. If we set this down to uh, 0 0.05 and go back to our model, I'm just going to sign a hotkey to Alt-5 so I can just snap this back even faster. So release step tolerance at uh, 0 0.05. We're going to make one. That's going to store it as relief 05. And then we're going to crank this up to one, make it. And then we're going to go back to our coin here. And then if we have our default settings here, we'll do Shift S, Control Z, and then we've got our very low settings here. We'll do Shift S, and then we've got our release step tolerance at one here. You can see the differences between those. Basically what I'm really seeing is just a, a general blobbiness or looseness around the border, uh, but there may be some differences if you have a lot of uh, height differences. Like for example, around the finger, it really kind of, when you have a very low step tolerance, it kind of blobs out. When you have a very high step tolerance, uh, it's got a little bit of a less of a, uh, an effect. Now, speaking of that border, let's go ahead and set our release step tolerance back down to 0.2. We have this relief blur radius. So in that instance, if I have our model here, and again, I put that down to zero and I make our relief, and then I crank this all the way up to 10 and make our relief go back to our coin here. So here's seven, which is none. If I turn to the side here, you're gonna see that border. It's basically, here's the edge of my alpha and it just goes whoosh, straight back. So if I do shift S here, and then we go to the opposite of that, which is 10. Let me drag this out. And we look at the difference. We get a very, very smooth uh, border transition. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, use either one of these. If you want to go in and manually smooth or you want a little bit of a sharper transition, feel free to uh, bump that down. If you want a very small, soft, smooth transition, feel free to bump that out. Apply ball relief, we'll get to in just a second. I'm gonna hit Control N on my canvas and then undo this. Uh, but first I'm gonna go back here and we'll go ahead and do our skin shader. So again, if I line this up here and I turn on B texture and then say make ball relief, and you know what, we'll turn this blur relief radius down to uh, four, I'm, you know, default settings, make ball relief. That's gonna capture the alpha and the color. So if I go back to my coin here, I'm going to solo mode and just drag this out. Uh, first, we need to make sure you know, we'll turn colorize on and we'll turn on RGB for our brush. So now we can drag out and it'll grab the color. If you want it to ignore the alpha, remember you have this alpha option up here, so you can turn that off and that will just paint with whatever color you have along with your texture. And of course, when you do that, you can also remember you can adjust last. Of course, in this case, adjust last is also going to adjust uh, the RGB intensity. And again, if you it captured your texture and you don't want it, you can just go in here and say texture off, and then you're back to just dragging out the alpha. Now, it doesn't have to be a drag rect. You can change this to, you can drag dot, and you can use your brush size to kind of indicate where you want your model to go. In fact, you can even go through here and you can say, uh, you can hit W on your keyboard, hit Y or click this button up here to turn this into the transpose line. And then if you hold down control, you can load up your relief alpha, and then when you drag out, oops, we need to load up our alpha in the transpose. Now if we control drag this out, you can see we can go through and position and rotate this. However, if we just drag out here, this is just going to allow us to drag the alpha. So again, transpose will allow you to drag out and rotate in. Control tap to invert, and then again, go through here and inflate or deflate through. Uh, since we're doing this on a layer that we're recording, after we're done inflating, we can go up here and we can say, okay, turn off recording. And then I can go in here manually and I can drop down that layer intensity, go into the negative or even over crank it using the slider down here. So you can dial in this, you can say bake all. And also because we stored a morph target, 
we can use hit B on our keyboard, M to narrow it down to the morph brushes, and then G to select our morph brush. We can go through here, and uh, we'll turn off RGB, we'll keep Z add on, and I can morph out any areas back to the original if I want to. Or I can even hit switch, and that's going to switch the morph target to the front, and then I can morph in where I want my object to be. But we'll go ahead and undo that. We'll say delete morph target. And again, we'll go to our standard clone brush. We'll set this back to drag rect. I'm going to isolate just this poly group here. Control tab to invert. Control shift to bring everything back. Control tab to invert that mask. And then again, just quickly drag out my guy here. Now, if we want to load up another sub tool, let's go in here to, I, I want to keep these, but I want to load up a project. So I'm going to go load tools from project. I'm going to go into my ZBrush folder. C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, whatever version of ZBrush you're using. We're going to go into Z Projects, Demo Projects, double click the Demo Drone. Let's go out of solo mode here. And just like we did for our uh, guy capture, we can go through here, dial in your settings. We'll go ahead and capture the texture while we're here. Why not? We'll go ahead and say make this. Uh, make bar relief. We'll go back to our coin and we have a back here. So we'll go ahead and uh, another thing you can do, you can hit W. I'm going to go hit Y to go out of transpose mode. You can control tap this to just select that poly group here and then hit Q to go back into draw mode. And then again with our clone brush here, we can go through. We have colorize turned on, RGB turned on, and we can drag this out. We'll go ahead and turn our alpha back on too. So now we have color, our bar relief. If you want to, you can turn off colorize. We can see this is what we're capturing. We can go through here and we can adjust last. Oops, well, turn off texture, drag this out, and now our last stroke will be what we can adjust. So we can quickly, you know, dial in what that needs to be. So if I control drag to unmask, go into solo mode, we now have the front of our coin and the back of our coin just capturing alphas. Now there is one more option I didn't talk about, which is this apply bar relief. So uh, let's go uh, back to our character. We'll go out of solo mode and we have our character sitting here and uh, you know, we can even snap it back to the original view. So if you remember, uh, there's two ways you can grab Z depth information from your document. You can go up here to alpha transfer, grab doc, and that's gonna grab the Z information from your document. You can also go in here, if we go out of edit mode, which is going to drop our object on our canvas, and we'll switch this down here in the 2.5D brushes, there's the MRGBZ grabber. You can just click and drag, and that will also capture uh, not only your depth information, but also your MRGB, your materials and textures. Uh, but this is what we're looking at. So if you do either one of those methods, you're gonna have an alpha. So with this alpha selected, you can go in here and say, I'm sorry, not make, you're, you're gonna have that alpha selected. Again, either one of these Z depth grabs, you can select it and then go down here to say apply bar relief. And it's going to take that Z depth information and turn it into a bar relief alpha. So now I can hit control N on my canvas. We'll go back to our object here. We'll drag it out, We'll snap back to my camera. We'll go in here to subtool, grab our coin. And then if I grab this created bar relief, you're gonna see it's gonna behave very much like one that we grabbed from an object itself. Now we've talked about the alpha. Let's go down here to project bar relief, which you can find under tool, subtool, and then the project bar relief submenu. So if we undo this, again, we have a coin sitting in our scene. We got a weird guy who I just realized looks kind of like Conan O'Brien. Not saying he's a weird looking guy, just I made a weird looking guy. Uh, we can go in here to Skin Shader 4. So we have a coin object that's selected with an area that's unmasked and we have subtools sitting in front of it. So if we go over here to Project Bar Relief and we click that Project button and then I go into solo mode, you're gonna see it's going to take your subtool information and project it back on whatever subtool you have sitting in your scene. So instead of going through here and making an alpha and then using drag rect or masking and putting it on your object, you can literally just have your object sitting in your scene and it'll project back. So again, if I move the coin around, oops, let's go ahead and move the coin around or scale the coin up, say we wanna get more of his body, you know what, let's go full body here. I'm gonna say I wanna capture his whole entire body onto this coin. You can see I didn't spend a tremendous amount of time on the feet there. Uh, and you know what, let's do this. Let's hit W, go into move multiple. I'm gonna control shift drag over him 
and I'm going to change his position. I'm going to do a little, uh, he's pointing over in that direction. So I'm going to go out of move multiple. We'll go back to startup material. And uh, again, with this one selected, of course, let's hit W and control tap that poly group here. So I just project to the unmasked area. And then again, go back down here, project my subtools back onto that object. All of these settings, exact same settings that you have here, they all still apply. We'll go into solo mode. You see it captures that right on there. So the only thing I would change on this one maybe, so we'll undo that, is that relief blur radius. Maybe we'll turn that down to one. And you know what? Maybe I'll take this coin here and we'll, maybe I just want to do like a, like a waist up, maybe, or maybe ankles up. We'll just grab that hand there. Again, W, control tap that, and we'll say project bar relief. Go into solo mode. There we go. Perfection. Now, of course, on top of this, you also have uh, everything else that's available to you in ZBrush if you wanted to go through here. And again, you could make a layer and dial in how much of a projection you want. Use Morph Brush to clean anything up that you would like or soften any transitions. You can go into your deformations and you can say, I want to up the contrast. So instead of upping the contrast, and again, we'll just make it so we're just adjusting the contrast in this area. You can go through here and you can just adjust the contrast on your relief. Or you can even go through and smooth out your relief a little bit if you'd like. You can even go in here with your brushes, B, C. You have contrast delta, which is going to continuously contrast build up and then contrast target. Uh, so we'll go in here to contrast target. And if you just want to add a little bit of contrast in certain areas, we'll take that Z intensity down just a bit. So we can build up a little contrast here, a little contrast here, a little contrast here. And uh, so you get a lot of flexibility even after you've applied your relief to go in and, you know, adjust it however you'd like.